It's Create Day, my friends. Welcome to my channel. Today we're making over three items, so let's get started. I'm going to be using this picture frame that has a lot of nice detail on it, so I thought it would be perfect for this project. Also this wooden bowl and this little ceramic bird. I'm going to paint the frame in a color called Castle. This is a chalk paint. So I removed the back and the glass and I'm just going to go ahead and give this a couple of good coats of this color. And once it was dry I went in with a fine grit sandpaper to just kind of distress around the edges and the tops of the detail. Then I gave the entire frame a coat of clear wax. I just brushed it on and then wiped it off with a cloth. Now with that clear wax on there, I can go ahead and apply my antique wax and it will wipe back a lot easier than if that clear wax wasn't on there. So I can brush this into all the details and around the entire frame and be able to wipe it back so that I just get an aged look instead of having that dark wax like seep into the paint and completely change the color of the frame. So here it is with that dark wax down in all those details. Now I'm going to use my white wax to lighten this up and add another layer of interest to the details. It's the same process. I brush it on and then wipe it off. I got this piece of fabric at Hobby Lobby in the remnant section. And I absolutely love it with all the birds and postage stamps. So I need to figure out which one I want and I pick this one. And so then I use the back of that frame to trace around so I know where to cut out. I'm going to cut it out larger than that. I leave myself a lot of room so I can move it around and get it just right. So here I'm just using my little rotary cutter to cut the piece out. I'm going to attach this to the glass piece. So I'm figuring out how I want it to be on there and then I can flip it over and start gluing that down. I'm using E6000 and a little bit of hot glue for an instant hold. To glue this down, I didn't know if the hot glue would work well with the fabric on glass, so I wanted to make sure I had a glue that would um, be like a long-term hold. And then I just trim off the corners so that I don't have a lot of bulk in there, and then I trim off the edges and just glue that all in place. And now that that's all glued on there, I can put this back together and add some more details to the front of the frame. I'm using Antique Gold Rub and Buff to add highlights to the details on the four corners and then I will also use it around the edges of the frame. I'm 
I'm going to use a couple of stickers from this Tim Holtz collection of phrases and frames to make like an artist label or book plate. And I pick out one that says, don't forget to fly. And so now I'm just adding that same rub and buff antique gold around this to kind of tone down the bright gold and make it fit in with the rest of the frame. And then I'm going to also add these little hardware heads from Tim Holtz as well. They are super tiny. But first we need to glue down our little label. I'm going to go ahead and use tacky glue. I got that centered up the best I could and then pulled up one side, applied the glue, pressed it down, and then did the same on the other side. I applied the antique gold rub and buff to the little hardware heads and then applied them to the ends of the label with some super glue. I gave my little bird a primer coat of the Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 paint and primer in black and then I mixed up my own chalk paint um, color because I don't have a nice off-white so I used a couple of different colors to create this one, gave him a couple of coats, and then sponged on the final coat to kind of help smooth out the brush strokes and give it a little bit of added texture. Now I'm distressing with some fine grit sandpaper. I wanted to add a little extra to the distressing process. So I'm using my Pebble Beach archival ink and a sponge applicator to just kind of brush around and almost like, like his wings and feathers are kind of dirty. But I ended up just putting it over the whole bird. I, I felt like it just would look more uniform if I had it everywhere. And it just kind of tones down the white and just gives it more of an aged look. And now I'm brushing on clear wax and then wiping it off. And then I decide to go ahead and do white wax as well to tone down some of those black spots. Now here is where I'm using a stiff brush to remove the excess wax out of those little crevices. And now we are on to the bowl. I'm giving this a coat of clear sealer so that I don't have any of that color from the bowl bleeding through my paint. I'm using the color Castle in Home Decor Chalk Paint for this just like I did the picture frame. I do two coats front and back and then I seal it with my Select Seal Matte Sealer. So now I'm going to make my nest. I'm using Elmer's glue. I just put some in a cup, add some water to it. You're going to want to glove up for this because it is messy. I mix it together and smush it in my hands and then just Massage it into this Spanish moss, creating a nest shape, trying to get the out, outward shape of it, and also on the inside, making a nice little um, indentation into the center to create a nest shape that will fit into my bowl. Once I have it pretty well formed, I go ahead and put it into the bowl and then keep working with it in that so that it will fit within that space. I just keep working with it and I occasionally mist my fingers with water so that they won't stick so much to the glue and I just keep working at it and once I have it all pressed down in there I leave it to dry and you actually don't need to do any more gluing at that point it is really stuck in there after it's dried 
So now it's time to paint our little Easter eggs. I have some little styrofoam eggs that I got from, I believe from Dollar Tree. And I'm mixing up some plaster of Paris to coat them because they have styrofoam markings all over them, like little circles and whatnot. And I wanted them to be smoother. So I stuck them on a skewer. This one came off as I was dipping it into the plaster of Paris. But you just kind of do like a, you know, like a little fondue dip and um, shake off the excess. And then I have a little styrofoam block that I can just stick the skewers in to let them dry. I'm going to paint my eggs in sheepskin, French linen, and glacier chalk paint. When those were dry, I wanted to add some speckles. So I'm using watered down black, brown, and white paint with my little fan brush. And just tapping that brush gets those little speckles all over the eggs. And unfortunately, all over everything else as well. I end up with this paint on my face. It's on the tripod that my camera sits on. It just goes everywhere. I decided to add some other mosses to add some color to my little bird's nest. You could absolutely leave it as is with just the Spanish moss. And I don't know, I'm on the fence as to whether or not I should have done this. Um, I don't know. You'll have to let me know what you think. I, eh, it just, I, I thought it would be good to add this extra color in there. I'm just using hot glue to attach all these little extra pieces of different colored moss. I'm just not sure how I feel about it. So now I have a sticker I'm going to use that says New Beginnings and it has some like little leafy things on there that I'm not sure if I'm going to use or not but I'm going to give this a coat of my white gesso um, just because it's kind of a metallic puffy sticker and I didn't know if the paint would stick. So I'm going in with a espresso. It's just a brown color. And I'm going to paint over all of this. And then I will have to remove it and cut out like the paint left a film like in between all those letters. And so I have to go in with like my little clay tool and scrape all that out of there. So then of course some of the white comes back. And I have to go in and hand paint underneath, especially around the edges, with the brown paint again. And now I'm going to use my Antique Gold Rub and Buff to do some highlights on here. I chose not to do the leaves because I wasn't sure if I was going to use them, so I just did the letters. And while it's dry, I'm going to go ahead and glue in my eggs. Now that the eggs are glued in, I'm adding in some more Spanish moss just around all the little eggs to make them look like they're all nestled into that nest. Now I'm going to use my chalk paint in the color Java with my little sponge dauber to just go around the edge of this bowl. Then I wipe it off with a rag just to make sure I don't have any excess on there. So now it's time to glue down our words. I'm using Aline's Turbo Tacky Glue. But I did water it down a little bit because I wanted more working time since this is like a long word. 
and I wanted to have time to position it and make sure it was right. But that ended up being unnecessary. It actually took me a long time holding it down to get it to stick. So the rest of them I just go straight tacky glue. So now I have to add the B onto the word beginnings and adjust that so that it looks right. And then I will add on the word new. And then I have to add in, I almost forgot to add in the little dots on my eyes in the word beginnings. I did decide to add one of the little leaf designs, so I did the antique gold rub and buff on that and then glued it in place. And then I added a little of the same antique gold rub and buff around the edges where I had done the Java chalk paint. And I just did that with my finger, kind of random spots. And then the last little thing to do was to give it a haircut trim off some of the excess and just kind of clean things up a little. And with that, we are done. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I hope I've inspired you to go create something. See you next time.